Thank you. Hello, everybody. For those who don't know me, I am the president of the club, and now we are going to start with some of the business and announcements. But before I go there, I want to say um, thank you if you attended last week's open house. And your feedback is important. So if you have any feedback, please reach out to me or any other officers in the club and provide your feedback for the open house event. We have District 55 conference this weekend. It's, it's virtual this year. And it starts on Friday with the evaluation contest. Saturday morning, um, I think starting from 9 or 9.30, they have some education sessions and some networking booths. I have signed up for one of the sessions which talks about how to get involved with the TEDx. That was my, um, actually that is my long-term goal and I'm really looking forward to that session. So have a look at the agenda and see if there is something that aligns with your goals and why you have joined Toastmasters. And I would highly encourage you guys to attend that conference if, if something aligns with your long-term goals. Um, next, oh yeah, and also this year, this conference is virtual and it is free for everybody to join. Uh, the next announcement that I have is about our officer elections uh, for our club. It will be on June 10th and we need more than 50% attendance for this event to happen. So we need your support to join this meeting. I have already blocked my calendar for that day so that I don't get any conflicts with that meeting. And I would really appreciate if you guys can do that too and join the session on June 10th. Uh, Ava has already sent out all the details about the officer roles. If you are interested uh, in becoming one of the officers, um, you know, reach out to the uh, officers who are serving this term try to get information and see if, if that is something that interests you. I know I've been president since last one year and I have gained so much experience. Um, I get to um, exercise my leadership skills almost every week. So if you are looking for that kind of experience, I would highly encourage you to look into the officer roles and, uh, and you know, at least explore and see where you end up. So that is all I have. Any other officers have anything that they want to highlight? All right, I'll take it as no. And I see one guest, Delna, joining our meeting. Hey, Delna. Do you mind introducing yourself, Delna? Um, uh, you know, anything about you, uh, who uh, I actually know <laughs> who forwarded you this meeting invite, but why do you want to join Toastmasters? What are your goals? What are you looking for? Hi, everybody. My name is Delna. I'm on a portfolio platform engineer in QPU with Sheetal. Um, I've heard about this meeting over the years. I started one year ago at Dell, but I interned three times before that. So, um, Public speaking is something I want to work on. I feel like I'm pretty okay at it, but I get very nervous beforehand. So practice makes perfect. Uh, so that's one of my even IDP goals this year, you know, working on my presentation skills, um, you know, being able to convey myself properly. So I'm really excited to join. Thanks for having me. Yay. Thanks, Delna, and welcome. Uh, please reach out to any of us if you have any questions after the meeting. With that, uh, I would like to hand it over to our Toastmasters of the day, Ms. Eva. Great, thank you so much. It's so fun to see some people I haven't seen in a little while. Akil is here on his paternity leave, calling in, love it. <laughs> so great to see him and, and seeing Delna here as a guest. Hopefully you do like the club and we get your application because we'd love to have you get started and start exploring a little bit more about what Toastmasters can teach you. I'm going to pull up the agenda so we can all follow along with what we're doing today. 
<laughs> she's just picking coconuts. I love it. It's always fun with these virtual backgrounds. I keep looking at mine and getting startled every time it resets because it gets a little jerky. So if it gets too jerky for you, let me know and I will change that. Okay, Doki. You can't see my screen. I realize. Here we go. Okay. Now you should be able to see my screen. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. And I needed to make that last minute change here. Yay, Robert. What's so great is when you reach out to people right before the meeting and you notice a gap, they will take it for you. Just in case you haven't seen it, this is what our sign-up sheet looks like. We tried to sign up roles ahead of time. I know that today a lot of our team had conflicts because of executive meetings. Technically, I'm skipping one, so shh, don't tell anybody. Sometimes it happens, though, and we have to go with the flow. So really big props to both Pablo and Robert, who are taking on either additional or last-minute roles. Looking at our schedule, I am, of course, your Toastmaster of the day. But let's start with Robert. So Robert's going to be our grammarian. And Robert, why don't you introduce the word of the day and what your role is? Good afternoon, everybody. I am today's grammarian, and today's word of the day is quintessential. As an adjective, it is perfectly typical or representative of a particular kind of person or thing. As a noun, something that is typical, part, or pure example, usually plural. As a sentence, the Marx was the quintessential intellectual, remarkably detached from the real world. As my role as grammarian today, I am going to be looking out for all those wonderful filler words that we add into all of our conversations, whether it's the ah, the and, the so, the well, whatever it may be. I'm going to keep count and make sure to uh, uh, point them out to you at the end to hopefully get uh, be able to speak better in the future. Right back at you, awesome. Toastmaster. <laughs> right back at you. I love it. Robert, if you would just do me a favor and paste that into the chat, please, so that people can refer to it throughout the meeting. We want to make sure that such a quintessential thing as a word of the day gets noticed and gets used. Perfect. Thank you. I see that he's done that. Our next role we have, of course, our two speakers. So we have Veronica and Michelle giving their speeches. And we have evaluators. So we need to have evaluators to give some evaluation to the speakers. Again, it's all about getting better, receiving that feedback. So not only the grammarian's feedback, but evaluators as well. And so we have Sheetal, who's going to be evaluating Veronica's speech. And then we have Pablo, who's doing a little bit of dual duty today. And he's going to be evaluating Michelle's speech and taking on the role of general evaluator. Pablo, would you like to introduce what that role is, please? Sure. The general evaluator will be providing, uh, will be introducing the evaluator, so I get to introduce myself. And also, I will give a general uh, evaluation of how the meeting went, meeting went so we can improve uh, for the next time. Yay, fantastic. Thank you, Pablo. Really appreciate you stepping up for those roles. We do also have a very important role in order to make sure that we are getting our speeches and our evaluations all on time and making sure we don't run late to our next meeting. And that is our timer slash award person, Louisa. Hi, everybody. I'm trying to move my screen. So I'll be the evaluator, um, the evaluator, the timer today for the speeches. We have um, the two speeches will be five minutes in green six in yellow and when it's time to finish at seven will be red same for the evaluations is two minutes in green no one minute in green two and a half in yellow three in red so that will be your time and for table topics as soon as you are reaching the one minute mark i will be in green and that's it Perfect, thank you. And uh, Luisa, just a correction, you said for the evaluation, I think it's two minutes, two and a half yeah. and three, right? Yes, okay. that's correct, that's what I said. Okay, okay, sorry. Yeah. Two to three minutes. Yeah. 
Perfect. And that was a great segue. You mentioned the timing for table topics. Today, Brian Thrasher will be doing our table topics. Brian, would you like to give a little bit of a description on what we're doing today? Sure. Well, table topics is always an opportunity for our members and our guests to think on their feet and give a one to two minutes response to a prompt. And the prompts today are all hypothetical scenarios. So I think you'll you'll really have to be thinking on your feet today, but it should be a lot of fun. Ooh, I'm excited. Hypothetical situations are my jam. Can't wait to see that. And just as a reminder, whenever a speaker, whether you're speaking as giving your speech or you're participating in table topics, do make sure to pin Louisa so that you can see those times. Louisa, I don't know if you want to put the word timer next to your name just to remind people in case we have someone doing a table topics, because it looks like we do have another guest that joined as well. And again, that's one to two minutes. You get up there and speak. That's all we ask for, but you do want to try to speak until it turns green, finish your sentence, and then wrap it up before it's too long on red. You are not required to participate in this setting. We are all about gentle encouragement, but we will still encourage everyone to take that opportunity to practice your impromptu speaking. I think it is time to get to our first speaker. So Veronica, and I have her intro here, yes. So Veronica is presenting her level two, understanding your leadership style project. So this is for her innovative planning path. In this project, she had to take the understanding your leadership style test and then create a speech on her top leadership styles. She hopes that you enjoy her speech and she has asked to please provide feedback. You can do that via private chat to her or also email or you can go into our Basecamp program and give her feedback that way. But she is asking for feedback regarding her confidence, her pacing, and her appropriate use of hand gestures. So with that, let's give a warm welcome to Veronica with her speech, Understanding My Leadership Style. Veronica? Thank you, Eva, Toastmasters. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Leadership comes in many forms and shapes. You have leaders that are authoritative, while others may, be, may take more of a bureaucratic type of role. In my case, the two styles that I tend to rely the most are democratic and coaching. Anytime that I am working on a project or I need to make a decision, I am someone who naturally likes to seek feedback and input from my team. So I tend to rely more on the democratic style of leadership. An example of this is Pixie which is a project I am currently leading where we're developing a marketplace for developers to subscribe to APIs. Although I have the final say on the decisions we make in regards to the product, I always check first with the rest of the team, especially the developers who are more experienced than me. This is very helpful in when deciding which features to prioritize. During this process, I like to ask the dev team for help and I ask questions like, what are your thoughts on this feature? Do you think we're spending too much time on it? How do you think this is gonna enhance the user experience? The same applies when they come and ask me for help and questions such as what the page should look like, what layout should we use, what design do I want to see get implemented? I often respond by asking them, what do you suggest? And nine out of 10 times, I let them execute on their own suggestions. This democratic style of leadership has helped developers be more independent, creative, and innovative. And it shows them that I trust their judgment. Now, where this style has given me some frustrations or even some bottlenecks in the past has been when time is limited. It takes a really long time to get consensus from everyone. And this can be an issue when the decisions to be made are time sensitive. In these situations, I tend to rely more on an authoritative approach and make the decision on my own. This style has also been inefficient when team members do not have the expertise to make quality contributions. I often see this with junior developers. I cannot give them the same independence that I will give a more senior advanced developer, as this can often lead to code issues, the product breaking, bugs. So with them, I tend to implement more of a coaching style of leadership. Which brings me to my next point, my second most used leadership style, coaching. 
My own personal journey has never been a straight path to get to where I am today. For a long time, I didn't always know what I wanted to do. And it took me a lot of figuring out here and there and help to know what I wanted, especially help from those around me. Because of all the help, advice, coaching, and mentorship I've been given in the past and even today, I am someone that takes pleasure in helping others reach their goals, just like others have done for me. I also do not like hold on to knowledge. When I learn something new, I'm really eager to share that with the rest of the team, especially if it's going to benefit everybody. An example of this is my working relationship with Mandy. Mandy joined the team exactly one year after I did. When she started, she was also a recent graduate like myself who was just trying to figure out uh, and navigate through corporate America. <laughs> after my manager asked me to help her get on board it, I took this as an opportunity to mentor and coach her so she could stand out to leadership and they could see her true potential. As I am in charge of organizing fun and volunteering events for our team, I delegated some of these tasks to Mandy where she had to present and get approval from the leadership team. This way, she was able to practice her communication and persuasive skills. To this day, she's still grateful I included her the way that I did. And we continue to hold weekly one-on-ones where I continue to help her navigate through her professional journey. I really like this style because I am a strong believer that by bringing out the best in people and turning weaknesses into strengths, it helps create better solutions in the long term. Do emphasize long term though, how, because this type of coaching, the one downside is that it takes a really long time and it takes lots of patience. So when I choose to coach someone, I always make sure that I have the time to do so and that I'm also helping them be more independent. I have also come to realize that this style is most effective in one-on-one -on -one settings and when the other person is receptive to feedback. Where this style has worked for me the most have been with people like Mandy or junior developers who are eager to learn. However, where this style has failed me has been with some more experienced team members who are at a point in their careers where they're a little bit more reluctant to change. In situations like this, I it would be more appropriate for me to fall back into my democratic type of leadership or even use other types of leadership depending on the situation which transitions nicely into my next and final point. Even though democratic and coaching are my main leadership styles, when I took the understanding my leadership style test for this project, I noticed that for the other leadership styles, my scores were actually pretty close to each other. And that makes sense. Depending on the situation, I tend to adjust depending on the leadership style to get the outcome. I tend to adjust my leadership style depending on the outcome that I need for that specific situation. What about you? What is your leadership style? This project taught me that individuals can exhibit a combination of styles, but we all have a prominent style that we tend to rely on. I encourage you to find out yours. In my case, these two styles are democratic and coaching, but to grow into the well-rounded individual and leader that I aspire to be, I need to be aware of all these other leadership styles so that I can, that I can choose from and leverage them when it is best appropriate. By doing this, I will be able to improve my communication with my team, motivate others, and I will be able to handle challenges more efficiently and get the outcome I need. Thank you. <laughs> Great job, Veronica. I always love when we have these assessments, they teach us so much about ourselves, but also we can learn a lot about our peers that way well-rounded favorite gesture of the day. Our next speaker is Michelle. So Michelle is working on completing her first path, team collaboration. She is on her third assignment or third project, which is called research and presenting. Michelle recently accepted a new role woo, with a focus to ensure Bob Feiner's organization meets their 2030 moonshot goals. With that, she has been doing a lot of research and, or a considerable amount of research to become a SME, a subject matter expert. Today, she is gonna tell us about the research that she's done around gender diversity with a speech entitled, Why Gender Diversity is an Imperative. So with that, please give a warm welcome to Michelle. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. 
According to Dell's Progress Made Real report, we have approximately 165,000 employees around the world. With a goal of 50% to be women by 2030, that's over 82,000 females that are impacted. Today, only 31% of our global workforce are women and 24% of our people leaders are women. So we've got a ways to go. As Ava mentioned, I recently took on this new role as a playbook strategist representing Bob Finer's org with a focus on meeting our DNI goals and developing our talent. If your senior leadership is anything like mine, they want to meet these 2030 goals by 2025. That is just three and a half years down the road, and it's going to be here before we know it. If you are a woman, or you work with a woman, or have family members that are women, or you know a young girl that will become a woman, listen up, because you are part of this solution. I'm going to talk to you about the research that I have performed around how diversity affects companies, what I've learned specifically around why gender diversity is an imperative, and ways in which you can make a difference. The resources for how diversity and inclusion impacts companies is vast. At Dell, we partner with research companies such as Catalyst, which is a global nonprofit org focused on empowering and accelerating women in business. We work with them to ensure that we're mitigating bias that affects women and underrepresented groups. The data points that you see here drive the importance of diversity and inclusion home. Diversity leads to innovation. Inclusive workplaces equal higher NPS. Companies with higher gender and ethnic diversity are more profitable. And the buying power of women and minorities is growing exponentially. As our customers and our workforce diversify, we have to be not only prepared, but we've got to embrace and cultivate the values and the culture that support diversity. At Dell, we've got four pillars that drive our DNI strategy. It is all about empowerment. Empowerment for gender advocacy and equality, empowerment to create a culture of belonging, empower our ability to attract and retain and advance underrepresented team members, and to drive DNI thought leadership across the business. The world is becoming more diverse. Just like companies turn to us with help for their digital transformation, they're turning to us as leaders in the diversity and inclusion space as well to lead the way on their workforce transformation. The talent profile in which we start to hire must adapt to compete in today's interconnected global marketplace. So let's dive in to gender empowerment for this session. In order to empower women, you've gotta know what's holding them back. Women and men have different experiences when it comes to promotion, pay and opportunity in the workplace. Women must also battle negative perceptions around bossiness and aggressiveness as they attempt to climb that career ladder. A study done by leanin.org and McKinsey and Company found that women that start out just as equally as hungry to get to the top as their male counterparts, but the workforce itself just grinds them down. Women feel that they have fewer opportunities than men. Women are not being rewarded for pushing to advance or to receive higher pay. Instead, they're perceived as being bossy, or pushy, or abrasive while men are perceived as go-getters for that very same behavior. Elephant in the Valley, uh, research organized by women in tech shows that women share similar work workplace stories that most men are unaware of. They surveyed over 200 women, all with over 10 years experience with broad age ranges, and it showed that 88% of women have had people address questions to their male peers that should have been addressed to them. 90% witnessed sexist behavior at company offsites or at conferences. 84% have been told that they're too aggressive. There are a multitude of studies that reflect why women are held back. 
Now, let's see what Dell is doing about it. Change comes from the top down. I am proud to work for Dell and to have a CEO that advocates for DNI and is immersed in driving change. Michael Dell serves on the board of Catalyst and has invested over $12 million to advance women of color that are graduating with computing degrees. 100% of Dell executives are trained to recognize and combat unconscious bias. A few more quintessential programs Dell is running. We've implemented new STEM programs that are focused on women and minorities in tech. We've got new leadership and development programs targeted just for women. We're leveraging our employee resource groups to drive that inclusiveness. We all know that a more diverse team is a stronger team. It delivers more innovative ideas, which ultimately makes us all successful. Let's talk about what you can do. I challenge you to learn more about Dell's diversity and inclusion strategy. Broaden your knowledge around the statistics and the reasons behind it, and then put your money where your mouth is. Become a DNI ambassador. Use the skills that you're learning in Toastmasters to speak at conferences, team meetings, uh, Toastmasters events, anywhere that you can. Your voice matters. Help amplify the message and encourage your female peers, yourselves, and all other females from underrepresented groups. In closing, we're all in this together. It is the time to take action is right now. I challenge you, learn more about DNI, become an ambassador, join an ERG, be an ally. We are all welcome to all of the ERGs. I'm part of every one of them. <laughs> With your engagement, we can make progress real. That's a strong last line if I've ever heard one. We can make progress real. Way to go, Michelle. I felt like like we just got to do the air pump, like, yeah. But I was on mute, so it's okay. No one else can hear me. <laughs> this was wonderful. Both of our speeches were fabulous. And I'd like everyone to take a minute. So if I could have, give me a minute and a half, please, Louisa, to write comments for both Veronica and Michelle through private chat or start drafting up an email. I'm going to do the same.
Okay, I'm going to assume that feels a little bit longer than a minute and a half. I'm not really certain. I was typing. It is, it is. I think we need to move. Perfect. Okay. I have sent both of my comments over. Typing very fast, realized I wasn't on mute, so all you probably heard was the clicky clackety, but that's okay because it's important to get feedback, even if everyone has to hear me typing very loudly. <laughs> Let's move on to the next part in our meeting. It is now time bum, 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 for our table topics. Big round of applause for Brian. All right, everybody. Today we're doing hypotheticals, and I've also decided to try something else new, which is that you can still choose what number you want between one and nine, but I've sort of ordered them in what I perceive to be the difficulty levels, so you can try to choose where you want to attempt it. So one is what I think is the easiest, and nine is the most difficult. So who would like to go first? And again, you get to kind of feel out where you what the difficulty level is, so it's not, uh, shouldn't be too intimidating. Do we have any volunteers? I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go. I'll go. <laughs> All right, way to go, Michelle. <laughs> I'll go after her. <laughs> okay, uh, Michelle, what number would you like? One. <laughs> okay, you're going for the easiest one. All right. <laughs> You've won $10 million in the lottery. What now? I've won $10 million in the lottery. I cannot believe it. I'm so excited. I never thought that this would happen. Everything, I always do the little scratch off that I may win a dollar and that's it. But a million dollars, oh my gosh. I, I think the first thing I'm going to do is get out of debt. <laughs> that is always the goal. For some reason, every time I, I gain, I get rid of my debt, I gain more debt, and it just goes back and forth. So the first thing I'm going to do is pay off that debt and make sure that this money will start making money for me. Uh, I've always heard the bad things of people winning the lottery, that it's a curse. And the first thing that they do is go out there, spend it all, and they end up with less money than they had before they won the lottery. So I think my goal is to make sure that I am debt free and that the money starts working for me to where, to where not only can I remain self-sufficient, but I can also use that money to go help others. Am I still not in a minute? <laughs> I'm going to, there we go. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Michelle. And I really liked how you threw yourself into the hypothetical and acted like you were really there. That's that's a nice way to approach these. Uh, Robert, you're next. So choose between one and eight, one being the easiest and eight being the most difficult. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm brave enough to go to eight, but I'm still gonna go for the challenge. I'll do six. Okay. <laughs> Makes me nervous. Tesla wants to test its fully autonomous driving system, so it offers you and your family a free Tesla. The only condition is that you can only use the fully autonomous mode. Would you let it drive you and your family around? That is a very good question. I mean, it's exciting, don't get me wrong. Tesla is an amazing vehicle. The technology that's involved in it, how it can do so much, how it's so sleek. And let's be honest, it is a cool car. Like if I'm driving around in that vehicle, I mean, people are gonna be watching me. So to be autonomous like that, I would be a little nervous because I'm not in control. And I grew up learning that, hey, you don't have to worry about your driving, you have to worry about everybody else's driving. So now, I'm going even one step further and I can't even be part of that at all. I would say that if I had more of a comfort, because let's be honest, has anybody looked up at their ratings on how, if they're in a crash, would the airbags work that well? Would you be able to make it out unscathed? Because I sure as don't know those, that kind of information. But then again, 
It is a beautiful car. I don't know if I could say yes. I really just don't. I want to, my heart wants to, but am I gonna risk that for my family? Maybe not. For myself, I'll roll the dice. Thank you, Robert. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a tough one. Some of the tougher ones are at that end of the spectrum. All right, I believe Antonio was next in the chat. Antonio, one through seven, seven being the most difficult, what number would you like? Oh, you're on mute still. Okay, he's running away. I, I think we might have to go to Akil just for saving time. So Akil, what number would you like between one and seven? Uh, I'll go with six. Okay. Your neighborhood association has decided that all the buildings in your neighborhood will be painted the exact same color, but they're taking suggestions. What color do you recommend and how would you convince them to choose it? Okay. Uh, this seems to be an interesting question. Many years ago, I was in New York. And if you've seen the New York skyline from the Hudson River opposite to the Hudson, you'll see shades of glass, red brick buildings, uh, concrete, it, it looks so beautiful. And there is a theme to it. Uh, if I were to if I were to live in a neighborhood where all the buildings are of same color, I would really consider leaving it first. I would, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a colorful person. Uh, my, the shirt that I'm wearing doesn't really say so, but uh, I got a lot of colorful shirts in my closet. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I, <clears throat> I really like different kinds of shades. So one shade, uh, the whole neighborhood in one shade that that won't really be my type and it's a hot Austin market you know I would really want to you know take advantage of it uh, let, let, let let people who are crazy in this market buy the house where every neighborhood of same color and I might as well you know, go and buy an RV and live in that thank you Good job, Akil. And like Ava just pointed out, it's funny that you got that question with that background. I, that's completely unintentional on my part. That's that's the question that was that number. All right, Antonio, are are you off mute? I think I had it figured out. Yeah. Okay. I, I between one and you. six. Between one and six. Uh, all right. Let's do five. Okay. The U.S. government has acknowledged that there are that there are unidentified flying objects in our airspace and we'll be releasing a report on these next month. That's actually true. What would be your first reaction if the report concludes that these objects are actually space aliens? Did I say five? What's the, I meant six. <laughs> <laughs> six um, is harder, so. <laughs> um, well, I mean, there, I, I, I should say, I, I should be surprised. We should all be surprised, right? This is, uh, this is um, crazy, right? But uh, when you really think about it, there are many, there are two theories. I forgot the names of the guys that have created these two theories that have calculated the probability of life in our galaxy. And one came to intelligent life. So one came to 17 other planets with intelligent life in our galaxy, and another one came with, I think it was 50 or 60. And we got to remember there are billions of galaxies. So, I mean, even if we should be surprised, right, because for our entire lifetime, at least our, each one of us, right, this has never, never uh, been possible, right? It's always been fantasy. When you really think about it, you you know it's uh, your Russian mindset. You you think you mean it was due to happen eventually. Thank you, Antonio. Uh, can someone tell me if we're out of time? I'm never quite sure how long to go. Okay, 
looks like we're done. So thank you. And I'll pass it on back to our, well, to our general evaluator now, right? On right. To yep. Pablo. Thank you, Brian. Time for Pablo. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm your general evaluator for this meeting today. And I'm going to go ahead since we are running a little bit over time and uh, introduce Chital. She's going to be evaluating Veronica's speech. So, Chital. Thank you, Pablo. Veronica, I must say that was the best speech you have delivered so far. It was really good. The purpose of your speech was to highlight your leadership style and the impacts of your leadership style. And I think you did a great job highlighting the purpose of your speech by giving examples and walking us over with your personal stories. I think you got everybody's attention over there. So the clarity of your speech, I think um, the spoken language was really clear and easy to understand. I would like to challenge you um, for your next speech to use maybe more vocal variety. I felt in today's speech, you had a little bit of chance to, to exercise vocal varieties especially when you use the words like interesting or emphasize. Uh, I think you had a little bit of opportunity over there. So, so keep that in mind, uh, just to challenge yourself to get better in your next speech. Also, I would also like to challenge you um, with the hand gestures. I think you did a great job today but hand gestures are really tricky and especially for the online meetings. In today's speech, I felt that you used um, hand gestures maybe a little too much. Um, so it was good, but it was, um, it was to the point where I think sometimes it gets distracting for the audience. So uh, keep an eye over there, use it when you need it and not all the time. Your eye contact was really great. I think you were at the right distance from the computer and you were looking at the camera the whole time. Um, I think you did a really great job with audience awareness um, by giving examples and sharing personal stories. I loved your comfort level throughout the speech. It was really great. And your topic and everything, you did a great job, Veronica. Congratulations. Thank you, Chital. Thank you for that evaluation. It's a, a little bit hard to make comments about your evaluation when I'm competing against you, but uh, you, really uh, touch uh, important uh, topics that were hard to find in Veronica's speech because it was, I, I agree with you, it was a very good speech. Right now, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm gonna be evaluating Michelle. Pablo, please take your turn. Go ahead. Here I am. <laughs> All right, Michelle. I have to say that you, uh, without a doubt, are a professional public speaker. It's uh, just your, the, the way you, you project yourself, the topic that you were talking about, I could tell right away that you really knew what you were talking about, that you have done this presentation before, or at least you have prepared for it really well. So I couldn't really tell the difference if you had done it before you prepared. So I, I have to give you uh, a kudos for that. There are, I'm going to spend a lot of time challenging in you because that's what you need. You need to be challenged. There are, uh, the slides seem to me that were either for, to present, it, it wasn't clear if their slides were to give a presentation or for somebody to review them. So it, in my opinion, there was a little bit too much information on some of the slides, especially like, for example, the first slide, it had a link. 
But when you're presenting the link, it's a click here to go see this. And then you're like, oh, I can click. I want to go there, <laughs> right? So it, it just is a little bit distracting. So think about that. Maybe have a slides to present and slides to share after the presentation. So people have more information and they can read if you don't have the notes on the slides. So just that's just a, a suggestion. There are, um, there's, I was also a little bit confused in general because your title says, your title says why gender diversity is an imperative. And then you talk, you spend a lot of time talking about what Dell is doing about, uh, about that and not too much about why it's important. I, I knew, I know why it's important and I've read about it. I actually feel a, a, a lot about this topic. I, 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 I really like it, especially diversity regards to women. And, and I felt that it was a little bit short, the presentation on that. There was a lot of about things that happen to women and how hard it is, but not why it's important. Yeah, so you can infer, oh yeah, it's important because it's hard for them and it shouldn't be hard for them. But you know, just think about that a little bit. And the numbers are great, but stories are even better. When, for example, there's one slide that you have that uh, when women go to conference, this happens to them, customers don't talk to them, they skip them and talk to all this person. Instead of spending time on the slide, choose one of those things and tell a personal story, if you can, if you have one. If you don't have one, then think about something, someone else, a very good story will, will allow one of those things to really stick with the audience instead of three numbers, 83, 84, 85, which by the way, they weren't really different one from the other. So you couldn't really remember. You see, the idea should be, what is the general idea of that slide? It's like, well, women ha have a hard time at work. So just tell a story. That's a you know, really challenge, challenge. I'm trying to challenge you with that. And, um, and uh, let's see, there was, uh, just to close, I have to say when you said, oh, I'm really honored or something like that to work for Dell because of this. I agree with you 100%. That really, that's really what keeps me here at Dell, that the, the position that have Dell has taken a, a, towards diversity and other social issues. So thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Pablo. I created that presentation at five o'clock this morning. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. With that, I'm uh, going to, let's see, let's hear for, okay. So uh, you can start voting now and, and, and send your votes to, oh, sorry. I have to tell you, if you qualify, you all qualify. Oh, yeah, yes. So okay. it's all, all right. good. Send the votes to me. Woo! All right. And private message, please. Yeah. So private message to Luisa, your votes for uh, best speech best uh, table topics and best evaluator and try to have one or two. So uh, if there's a tiebreaker- yes, give me the can... first place and second place for- Yeah, first place topics. and second place. And uh, we, in the meantime, while you're doing that, we can probably hear the grammarian's report. Hello, hello. So for the most part, we were very consistent in not using too many filler words, no repeating of the sentences. Uh, did make an appearance quite a bit for some of us. Uh, I will say that it seemed to appear when two major things happened. When you're trying to change your thought from one thought to the next, or when you're trying to ramp up your conversation or wind it down. So that's really where I've, I saw the most people use those filler words because they were unable to connect the dots or trying to make the, the, the connections. So other than that, good job, everybody, especially Brian, Michelle, uh, Lucia, Ava, um, all of you, I mean, pretty much nothing to show up at all. Well done. Y'all are very, very clear and precise. All right. Thank you, Robert. Thank you for that, uh, that report. And uh, still, I think we need a little bit more time. And in the meantime, I'm gonna give my evaluation, my general evaluation. This was, again, another uh, meeting that we nailed it. We were right on time, a little bit late on table topics. That, that was my fault. I usually am the one that kind of like wave, okay, this is enough, but uh, nothing, not a big deal. I would have liked, uh, and I will encourage the uh, newcomers to participate next time and also remind, uh, members that to give opportunities to others, right? Just let's let that silence, that awkward silence uh, linger for a little bit. So 
we can uh, uh, see if somebody gets brave enough to participate. I know there were hearts uh, pumping fast and, uh, and a little bit uh, thinking about, oh, should I go, should I not? That kind of stuff. So just keep that in mind. And, um, and yes, and I think, uh, let's see, Luisa, are we ready? Not yet, okay, <laughs> all right, I can continue uh, talking. Let's uh, use, uh, uh, maybe use this time to hear, uh, sorry, Eva, you were saying something? Oh, yeah, so we can con uh, use this time to hear from, uh, from the guests if they wanna share what your thoughts are about the meeting and just, you know, feel free to unmute yourself and share 30 seconds, a minute to what you think about the meeting. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, I thought this was fantastic. I came in with no expectations. I wasn't really sure, you know, what involved this meeting. It's so well organized for one, like you guys are all great. The speeches, amazing topics. Um, I was so impressed with them too. And table topics is so fun. I, I almost wanted to jump in. I got really nervous there though, but uh, <laughs> it, that's just such a fun, you know, activity. And uh, I think everyone's providing feedback too. That's so important. So overall, I'm just very impressed. All right, thank you, Delna. Thanks for sharing. Anyone else? To Jesse? Thank you, Delna. We hope to see you again. Ready. All right, all right, Luisa, let's hear okay. it. Let's hear it. Hi, how do I share here? Hello, hello, hello. I don't know how to share. Okay, share. Can you see my screen? You do, it's right? Yes. Awesome. Okay, so. Ay, ay, ay. I don't know how to use Teams yet. Best evaluator, it's Pablo. Congrats. For the best speaker, it's Michelle. And for table topics, this was. Like almost everybody voted for, for this guy. Akil, welcome back. <laughs> Thank you, Luisa. Akil Thank coming you. back with a bang. Yeah. Oh, always right. have something funny to say. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we forgot to use the, the, the word of the day. Uh, well, I forgot. All right, uh, I don't have a cheat out. Do you have anything else you wanna? Yeah, thank you, Pablo. Hey, Jesse, I see you on the call. Do you want to provide any guest feedback? Hey, um, good afternoon, everyone. I, I, I started a little bit uh, later than, um, than I like to. I was running a little bit behind on my last meeting. Um, no, this is fantastic. I was uh, really looking at everybody's uh, questions and how you know quickly everybody was able to you know, just kind of snap right to it, um, get a feel for the question, you know, really start to kind of grab some of those thoughts that are kind of like in the air, the, you know, like first impression thoughts, and, uh, you know, really try to build a story around it. So, um, you know, I, I thought that was phenomenal. Uh, presentations, you know, were spot on, like, like Pablo mentioned that they were, you know, very, uh, that a lot of thought was placed behind them. Uh, they were clear, concise, uh, very professional. So I'm really glad to be here, you know, looking to continue to, uh, to, to build on, on myself, learn from everyone else that has uh, contributed. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for providing your feedback. And I hope to see you in future meetings too. <laughs> so before to it. And, um, I also want to highlight that we have our evaluation workshop on uh, June 17, we will have a guest speaker coming in and uh, giving presentation, highlighting different or how to give effective evaluation, constructive evaluations. It's a great opportunity to um, improve your feedback skills, giving feedback skills. So, um, you know, and even guests are encouraged to join that session if you are interested. Uh, with that, uh, I think that's all I had. Thank you all for joining. Bye. Thank you. Good to see everyone. Bye, guys. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. The rest Bye. of your day, everyone. Uh, enjoy. Bye.